lens review. Yeah, I was in the market for a lens on Cyber Monday and I thought, man, I will get a great deal. Um, apparently I did not because all the lenses that I was looking at were still $700 and I didn't feel like buying that. And I found a lens for $300. And this is my cheap kit lens now. If you stay tuned, I will also show you a little trick how you can lock down your focus and be always in focus when you're like V-Lock and you're a handhold. So I will sneak that tip somewhere in there. It was Black Friday and I was on vacation and I was like, oh, maybe there is a good deal for my GH5 for a kit lens because I have a wide angle lens right over here, the 7 to 14 and great lens, but sometimes I just miss the zooming. I also have a tailor photo lens 40 to 150 really great but only for things like far in the distance and besides that not really useful i was like man oh man i wish i had a kit lens well i was in the market for one and i found one the lumix 14 to 42 vario this is a panasonic lens and that has the bonus it has optical image stabilization it's the version one so still good enough it's not the version two that costs like basically eight hundred dollars on cyber monday seven hundred dollars so that is not a deal for me i'm all about saving that money so let's talk about the lenses that i have and why i wanted that lens so i have the lumix 7 to 14 millimeter it's a perfect lens for vlogging or landscape shots it's a i bought this lens refurbished and it was really good and i can't complain and i love that lens it's my go-to usually um, but if i know i maybe go somewhere where i have to point out things in the distance or i want to lay the focus on things that are a little bit farther away or I basically need the electronic image stabilization. I will not use that lens. I will use now my kit lens because the image stabilization with this one works way better because by the wide angle lens, you will get a wobbling in the corners. So you have to basically turn it off and rely on the in-body stabilization of the GH5. That is quite good. But yeah, overall, it's a little bit better to have also like the electronic image stabilization. And for this, this is a charm. Uh, for everything in the distance, I got my 40 to 150. It's really neat if you have to um, shoot some birds or you want to um, shoot some bees or whatever. So basically, for everything in the distance, it's a great lens, but it's not really usable for me because it's just too far away. So the 40 is actually an 80, and yeah, the GH5 has a two times crop. That basically means a 40 will to will be an 80 and so on so let's talk build quality the lens overall is a 14 to 42 and it's a 3.5 to 5.6 aperture and the zoom pattern is quite interesting because you would not expect that usually you zoom all the way in and the lens is on the bottom and you zoom all the way out and the lens goes up this lens is quite opposite it goes up and down and again up so it's like really weird so 14 millimeters, the lens is a little bit out and then you zoom um, halfway in and the lens is on the bottom and then you do it the other way around and it's all the way up. It's like weird, but it works. I'm just like kind of worried if you screw in the lens cap or something like that or you push it that you kind of ruin the mechanics in the lens because it's not the best lens. It has a metal bottom, what is really nice because if you drop the camera or the lens or whatever, it's nice that it probably will not break there. It will break somewhere else and it will be uh, like manageable. But overall, it's more plastic on plastic, so I'm kind of worried about that. But if you treat your gear well, you don't have to worry. I mean, I have here, this is a metal lens, it's really heavy, but if I drop that, the glass probably breaks. So even if that's plastic, it doesn't really matter that much because it does the job and plastic lasts a long time. Usually something else breaks, like, like I said, the class. So the build quality is overall, it matches the price. So let's talk about the zoom range. I will show you how the 40 millimeters looks and I will show you how the 42 looks. Um, yeah, here's an example. So this is now 42 millimeters handhold and yeah, let's zoom all the way out to 14 millimeters 
40 millimeters and this is 42. So this is the reason why I want to have the zoom lens. If I'm, for example, seeing an alligator over there, then I can zoom finally in. And with the whole wildlife thing here, it's pretty neat to have. I think I found a baby alligator right there. <laughs> here we talk about my little trick that I had with the GH5 for vlogging. So let's say I'm out of focus, I want to bring myself in focus and I want to lock that down for vlogging. So let's imagine I'm holding the camera like that, handhold, and I'm out of focus. I basically, before I start record, I hit the shutter button halfway and it will zoom on me. Well, I tap it right now that it should work too. Yeah. And now I switch the focus dial onto manual. Now it's locked down. So I can wander around and I will be not out of focus and it will just stay like that. It's a simple trick, but it works with one hand and it's pretty impressive. But would I recommend a Lumix 14 to 42? Yes, I would, but it depends. If you already own a kit lens or you already own something in that zoom range, I probably would not recommend it because it's a cheap lens. Um, the low light capabilities are not the best, but if you're on a budget and you don't have a kit lens, I would definitely would recommend this lens because it does the job. And the job is basically to cover 14 to 42. And for that, it's quite nice. Um, it's not really a lens where you get some nice bokeh shots. It's not a lens where you can zoom in ultra, ultra far. But it, like I said, it just does the job. It's like a cheap workhorse and that's what I bought. It's like, yeah, I did not buy a lens where I'm like, oh, now I shoot now at night times um, something special. No, I want to have a lens where I can run and gun and I don't have to worry about, ooh, I will break that thing.